Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I'm a high school math teacher. We are going to multiply polynomials by monomials today using the distributive property, which is the idea that if I multiply something out here, an expression times a polynomial, then each, I can instead multiply that expression by each of the separate terms and add them all up uh, instead. That'll be equivalent, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. So the first thing is, let's look at what we are multiplying. We've got this thing out here, which is a 5, and we're going to multiply it by each term there's a term, 2x, inside of this other polynomial that we're multiplying by. So we're going to do 5 times 2x and 5 times 3 separately and add up those things. Uh, in, in this case, we're going to end up with just a nice expression. 5 times 2x, we are multiplying two monomials, so we multiply the numerical coefficients. 5 times 2 is 10. And there's no variable part here, and so we only have the variable part from this component on this side. So we have 10 x. So 5 times 2x is 10x. We're going to do the same thing here, 5 times 3, and that's just positive 15. So we add 15. And there's nothing else to do here. This is in its simplest form because these are not like terms. They do not have the same variable component, and so we're done. That is as simple as that one can get. Okay, let's do another one. Let's start with uh, 3x squared. We're going to multiply that times this polynomial. There, how's that? So 3x squared times this stuff. So once again, we are multiplying this by each term. Let's look at where the terms are. There's one, and there's one right there. Notice I grabbed the minus sign there as well. So we're going to multiply 3x squared times 4x squared, and also times negative 11x. So let's do that. 3 times 4 is 12. That's positive. x squared times x squared is x to the exponent 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 x's, or if you realize that they have the same base of x, and when you're multiplying, you can add the exponents together. That's the first term. That came from 4x squared times 3x squared. Let's do the next one, 3x squared times negative 11x squared. Being careful with that negative sign, 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. And then the variable part, x squared times x, well, remember, this is the understood exponent 1, so that's going to be x cubed. Again, this cannot be simplified anymore because there we have x to the fourth, here we have x to the third. Those are different variable components, so they are not like terms and cannot be combined. Okay, how about, uh, let's put a negative in here. Negative 7x times, let's do 4 minus 3x plus 5x squared. <clears throat> okay, now this is a trinomial. It has three um, separate terms, but that's fine. The same uh, rules apply, and be careful with this minus sign. It needs to be part of what you're multiplying by. This is negative 7x squared, not just 7x. Sorry, not, it's not squared at all. Negative 7x, not just 7x. Let's multiply by the first term, which is 4, by the second term, which is negative 3x, and also by the third term, which is positive 5x squared. <clears throat> negative 7x times 4 is negative 28, and the variable part is x. Negative 7x times negative 3x, positive 21, and the variable part will be x times x, which is x squared. And last, we have negative 7x times 5x squared, Negative 7 times positive 5 will be negative 35, and the variable part is x cubed this time because we have the understood 1 there. Adding those exponents, 1 plus 2 is 3, or you can just think of it as x, 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 that's 3 x's multiplied together, x cubed. Okay, now these have all been just x's, and any variable letter is fine, but you could have more than one, so let's do one like that. It's negative 7x squared y times negative 15xy minus 14 minus uh, 7y. How's that look? Okay, I'm going to write stuff underneath here as I do this. So he, again, here's what I'm multiplying by. We're going to multiply by this term, by that term. There's a negative 14, and the last term is negative 7y. <clears throat> okay, let's start with this. Negative 7 times negative 15. That'll be a positive answer. 7 times 15 is 105. 
Now let's look at the variable parts, the x's, one, two, three of them, and the y's, I have two of them. So that's the first term I get from multiplying this by this. Now let's move on to the next one, negative 14 and negative 7. <clears throat> I think of this as negative 7, so it's going to be a positive value, first of all. I think of this as 7 times 7 times 2. 7 times 7 is 49, times 2 is 98. And then, let's see, there's no variable part here, so I only get the variable part from this area right here. So it's x squared y. This is the same as, you're just combining, in this case, you're just multiplying the two numerical coefficients together. And at the end here, I'm still going to have a positive value. 7 times 7 is 49. They're both negative, that's why they're going to be positive in the answer. x squared, because there aren't any here. y times y is y squared. Okay, so in each case, I've multiplied this thing that I've written out front here by each term on the inside. And just to be clear, it doesn't have, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't have to be written out front. I could have an expression like this, 3x minus 5 times uh, 8. These are still being multiplied together, so if you want, you can rewrite it, or you can just do things like this. It's the same thing. It's this is being multiplied by each separate term on the inside. So this one would be 24x minus 40. All right, I hope that helps you out. Thanks.